Leonard, you've got a new and very touching movie called Never Forget. Tell me about this story. It's the story of Mel Mermelstein, uh, who when he was 17 years old was taken with his family, mother, father, two sisters, and a brother, uh, into Auschwitz because they were Jews. Uh, they were living in Czechoslovakia. A year later, Mel was the only one of the family who had survived. The rest had all died in the camp. His mother and uh, two sisters were gassed to death. His father and brother died in slave labor. And uh, he came to Southern California, started a new family, and started a business, and prospered, uh, had a good life, until along came an organization called the Institute for Historical Review. They are neo-Nazi revisionists. I, had never, I didn't know that these people existed, that they were serious and took themselves seriously, that they actually believe or, and try to tell people and spread the story that the Holocaust never happened and that the Nazis never gassed any Jews in, in any death camps in Europe. Uh, Mel wrote a letter about them, denouncing them to some newspapers, and, and some newspapers published his letter. They responded to him and said, your letter says that you have proof that Jews were gassed by the Nazis. You bring us your proof, and, and if we're satisfied with your evidence, we'll give you a reward. If you don't respond to us, we'll be forced to notify the newspapers that you ducked our challenge. So, he went to various organizations and friends and lawyers and what have you and said, look at this letter that they've sent me. They're challenging me and, and uh, threatening me, threatening to denounce me as a fraud if I don't respond to them. And everybody said, forget it. Don't pay them any attention. Uh, they want the publicity and don't take them seriously. And it's not your responsibility. He said, it is my responsibility. They've written this challenge to me. And I promised my father before he died that if I survived, I would continue to tell the story. He found a lawyer, a man named Bill Cox, terrific, interesting guy from Texas who said, you're right, these are thugs. They should not be allowed to bully you, not here in the United States, uh, now in 1970s, 80s, whatever. They took on the case and they won the case in the Superior Court. They won judicial notice. It went into the American law books for the first time that the Holocaust was a historical fact. Now, your family faces a lot of problems in this movie. I mean, there was the envelope with the hair and... Yeah, it's very much a story of the family. It's very much a now story. That's what attracted me to this story, that it is not a story that takes place in the 40s. It's a story that takes place in Southern California now. And during the process of the case, you're right, the family was very much affected. Mel's family, Mel's wife was affected, his children were affected, his business suffered because he was so preoccupied with the case. He lost customers because he wasn't taking care of business properly. Uh, but he was pursuing this case because he felt it was important, because he felt he had this responsibility. Uh, I think it was a heroic thing to do. I think many people would have said, why bother with this? Who needs this? How important is this? And who's paying attention to these people? He felt it was important. And I'm inclined to agree with him. I, I, I think he's, uh, he's to be commended. And it was a privilege to play the role. Leonard, do you think that in these days, I mean, Passover has just happened, do you think the Jews are starting to forget their past, forget their heritage? I'm, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a historian in that sense. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I can't tell you uh, scientifically what the data is to answer your question. There are probably sociologists and historians who can answer your question. I, I know that it is possible for history to be revised if enough people continue to work at it. 1992, next year is going to be the 500th anniversary of Columbus' arrival on these shores the, of the Americas. We have always revered Columbus. This is the guy who discovered America. You know, that's a terrific thing. You know. There are a lot of people around who are not quite sure that Columbus had the best motives, that Queen Isabella was a terrific person, that what they did to the Indians was so terrific. There are people around who believe that it was a case of plunder and enslavement and, and uh, that history has been revised to make it all seem like it was all peaches and cream, that it was all a very happy event. He landed on the shores and there were the Indians, hey, come on in here, Columbus, you know. <laughs> Let us show you our country, because you're welcome here and we know that you come with good intentions. <laughs> so, uh, that's a case where we're, we're gonna hear a lot about the revising of history to clean up the act for Queen Isabella and Columbus. That's what this is about, it's about revisionism. Leonard, when did you become involved with this project? About five or six years ago. I, I heard about it uh, 
from a, a lawyer, uh, a, a Washington, D.C. lawyer who was doing some work on a case, and I was fascinated. I was particularly fascinated because it was taking place so currently here in Southern California. Now, a lot of people might see you and find out that you do have that Spock haircut. Uh, I take it that there's a rumor that you're going back into production on the sixth film? On, on April 15th, we will start filming Star Trek VI. Leonard, I appreciate the time. Thank you.